Hello friends, Naya Swami Hriman here, and this is our weekly talk inspired by the wisdom of Paramahansa Yogananda in his now famous life story autobiography of a yogi. The one thing needful is what I call this today, and I'd like to quote a poem that Yogananda quotes in chapter 7, a chapter called The Levitating Saint. And uh, let me read the poem to you. He writes first by way of introduction, Mirabai, a saint in India, medieval India, a female saint, composed many ecstatic songs which are still treasured in India. I translate one of them here. If by bathing daily God could be realized, sooner would I be a whale in the deep. If by rooting, eating roots and fruits he could be known, gladly would I choose the form of a goat. If the counting of rosaries uncovered him, I would say my prayers on mammoth beads. If bowing before stone images unveiled him, a flinty mountain I would humbly worship. If by drinking milk the Lord could be imbibed, many calves and children would know him. If abandoning one's wife would summon God, would not thousands be monks? Mirabai knows that to find the Divine One, the only indispensable is love. You know, I think of all the many books I have read and uh, about theology and cosmology, cosmogony, all the scriptures. I have read alone, what to mention, all the scriptures in the world and all the conversations and debates and countless number of books, uh, all the heresies and you know, synods and conferences and uh, all these things down through history, east and west throughout the world, as we debate the niceties of our spiritual and religious beliefs and rituals and symbols. Uh, I think all of that has its place and is interesting enough. I, my own life uh, deals with a, a fair amount of it, but the one indispensable thing is the love of the heart. And Swami Sri Yukteswar's very abstruse talk about theology, cosmology, and cosmogony, his abstruse little book, The Holy Science, is um, it's pretty tough stuff in terms of intellectual comprehension alone, never mind intuitive realization. But in any case, he, though he was a cold mathematician when it came to uh, such things and to the spiritual path generally, he kept his feelings to himself as it were. He himself said the natural love of the heart was the one indispensable requirement to take one step on the spiritual path. And I think of, you know, all the um, materialistic people indifferent to spiritual things, to the atheists who are uh, adamant and um, dogmatic about their atheism and con condemning uh, spiritual and religious things. I think of agnostics who are more or less paralyzed by their doubt. And... Uh, I want to tell, therefore, a story that uh, my teacher and founder of Ananda wrote in his um, le um, uh, hallmark book, Education for Life, describing a system of education and parenting for families that has nary a Sanskrit word in it, no mention of Ananda. And so I wanted, he tells a little story that fits this topic. He said, I am reminded here of an encounter that I had years ago with a young man who was aggressively atheistic. Though I tried to broaden his understanding by suggesting that God is a universal concept, I got nowhere. Later that evening, I offered him and a few others rides to their various destinations. 
A 16-year-old girl in the car made this statement apropos of nothing in our conversation. I don't believe in love. After I'd let her off at her home, the self-styled atheist turned to me in amazement. Can you imagine that, he exclaimed, not believing in love? <laughs> Chuckling, I replied, and you call yourself an atheist? <laughs> and then there's that charming story also from Swami Kriyananda when he was in Australia and gave a lecture on spiritual matters and a man was late for the lecture, uh, an Australian, and he said, I caught part of your lecture, but uh, I'm an atheist and uh, what you have to say to me? And uh, Swami Kriyananda said, well, mate, what if you consider God as your own highest potential? That person that you could be in its greatest uh, way, virtuous, whatever. And the man thought for a moment and he said, well, mate, I can live with it. And so it was. And many people have commented that to be loving, to be kind, to be wise, and so on. All the typical virtues that most people admire is to be spiritual. Those are all spiritual qualities. Well, it could be said from the standpoint of cosmic consciousness that none of those are adequate in themselves to achieve God consciousness, but that's not really my point today. Love is, is, has many aspects to it. It's just a four-letter word in our language, and a lot of those aspects aren't worth mentioning. But to me, joy, acceptance, respect, enthusiasm, energy, all are aspects of the great diamond, the great prism of what love is. Swami Kriyananda, to quote him one more time, said that um, love is bliss in motion. Bliss has no, is just is. But love is in relationship to something, someone. And so the motion of bliss, which has within it, you might say, the impulse to want to share, that, that impulse, that bliss in motion, is joy, is love. And if we look at the world around us, you could be an agnostic or maybe an even atheist and look around and with awe and wonder at the universe, at the beauty of nature and the magnificence of, of all things created, at art and architecture and science and the great deeds of humankind. All of those inspire an expansion of consciousness that has, I think, at its, at its source, an expansion of heart energy, which I will call love. The one thing needful then is love, and it will guide us. All right, joy and love.